Today I'm in Titusville uh, looking at another sailboat. It's, it's another free sailboat, this guy here. So we'll do a little tour of it now. So Bayfield 29, about three and a half foot draft. So that's nice for Florida. A little shallower than my four foot draft on my other boat. And 10 foot beam, so pretty wide. I believe it is a cutter rig. It's got a two four stays up here. A little bow sprit. So you can have a jib and a stay sail. I think he's also got a Genoa with it. Uh, the mast is heel step, so it goes all the way to the keel, which uh, is not, not crazy about because that can make some leaks, but that's okay, it's not a big deal. So yeah, you got the two winches for both the head sails there, it looks like, and then just the main sheet coming back here. Lots of lots of chain plates. You know the chain plates, they kind of have these inside and then these ones on the outside. And that really massive chain plate in the back here. And then we got a little ladder, that's kind of nice. No motor on this one. They took it out to do some work on it and then I guess the mechanic rebuilt it without giving them a quote and it wanted $9,000 for this like ancient motor to put back in the boat and the guy said no. <clears throat> So now he has no motor and he's sick of paying the, the slip fees. I think it was, he said it was close to $400, 380 or something maybe. So I just wanted to get rid of it. And he was having trouble selling it. And so he saw my YouTube channel and just said, hey, you want the boat, you know? I don't want to pay these fees anymore, which kind of makes sense with the value of some of these boats, you know? If they're set for sale for, for too long, you, you're better off just giving them away than waiting for that person that's going to want to buy it. So no roller furling. We got Hank on sails up here. There's a little anchor uh, roller up there though. It's got a locker for the anchor. It's kind of neat. Looks like it's not draining. <laughs> but we've got a Danforth anchor in there. A little bit of chain and some rope. Uh, holding tank with pump out. Only no overboard option. Lifelines. They look okay. Stanchion bases seem solid. The chain plates, no obvious signs of corrosion on these two. I'll have to check the inside ones. That would be the one to worry about. Uh, maybe a little bit of rot on the halyards. Actually, I think it's just dirty. Those could get by with. We'll take a peek at the sail later. Got a water fill and are getting a little old on there. A couple winches for the for the halyards. There should be three. Oh, one more over here. That's nice. The winches work. Not bad. Not bad. A lot of winches. We got a Tiller here, could maybe shim that. A little bit of wiggle in the headstock, but feels okay otherwise. Got a bilge pump in there, some more jack lines and anchor lines. The old throttle controls. Obviously, no engine though. Maybe you want to reseal that because that goes into cabin space. Two, three. So let's take a look down below. So I'll start the companion way. There's a little bit of a bridge deck to kind of keep water from going if it pump fills the cockpit into the cabin. So that's a nice feature. Um, a nice, easy access here. Hatch. Uh, slides okay. Not too bad. Look down over here. We got a little nav station desk. Oh, that looks like it. Maybe flips around there. Okay, so you got a little bigger desk there. Nice to have a desk sometimes. And then we got some berths here, or you could use them for store. I'll use them maybe some for storage. I like that they have some of these nice little doors over the storage areas on the side. 
because I feel like my boat looks all junky with all this stuff. How are we sitting up? Some little cubbies here. That's okay. Bunch of storage there. Oh, I guess that must be like a, a fridge or something. Oh yeah, so we've got a, a fridge in there. Let's take a look inside. Oh, very clean. I like he's got a nice grate there. That's actually pretty nice. Here we have a little pump sink. Pump works good. This is a pressurized alcohol stove, which I haven't used. He was explaining it to me. Um, and I guess we have to replace this plunger. But you like build up pressure and then it was very complicated to start, but I'll mess around with that because I never use one. And then another little, little berth over there. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's in okay shape. The sink's kind of towards the center, of the, a little bit more towards the center of the boat, which is good because Sometimes when you heel over, the, the sink will go below the water line, you know, it'll, like water will start to bubble up here, so that could be good. You kind of have to test it and see how it really works in actuality. So going forward, we've got the keel stepped mast, and not really much obvious signs of leaking. I'm sure it probably leaks a little bit. And then I like the way this thing folds out, so it was like this before. But then we fold it out and put the cockpit cushions there, so have a nice bed for two people there. And then lots more storage behind there. Cool. We've got three three sails, and they don't look like they're in too bad of a condition. Judging from looking on the outside, the stitching looks okay. All the sails. I didn't look at this one. What's this one? Oh, it's good. No, I think it's not. I've heard that's the Genoa, I think. The Genoa, yeah. Yeah, but it's got some cool colors. Mm -hmm. You know, I do like my cool color sails. I think now the electrical stuff works. So I think it's pretty smart. He just got some solar lights in here. It's a pretty good system. And interesting about this boat, there's no, uh, there's no V-berth up here, which I'm, I'm not really a fan of most V-berths. So it's just got a lot of storage. And that's kind of what I use for my, my boat as it's already kind of set up like that. So I think that's a good way to go. Uh, we got a bathroom here. Uh, that goes to a holding tank. I like that when they just pump overboard. Oh cool, it's got some bug nuts. And a fender. Maybe a sail cover or something. Some fishing stuff. Another sink. This one doesn't look like it's hooked up to anything. Or maybe it's got its own water tank that's empty, I'm not sure. So these, these type, I believe these are not really supposed to be on boats, these type of, I could be wrong, seacocks, um, but they're, I've told them they're not the best, but whatever, I'm sure it's fine. It's held up this long, it'll last for another year or so. Uh, It's nice for privacy. We had some people walking by early in the morning. Look at this hatch. Let's see. But yeah, really, that. I don't think it comes to that previous owner had been coming to the boat much, and there's not a whole lot of signs of, of leaking. The hatch seems okay. Actually, the this little foam job seems to be working okay. And it's not really crazed. Pretty nice for a free boat. Mm -hmm. I think I'll definitely take this. This is kind of interesting too. These, uh, they stay back there. It's like bolt heads have like lined up. I think we can divide the cabin. I haven't seen that before. That's kind of neat. What else we have? Let me look at the, where the engine was. Okay, here we go. Pull that off. So the previous engine must have been tiny. I mean, that's a really small space. But they have electric uh, retrofit kits now you can get, so that might be a option, or maybe just throw an outboard on the back. Use that for storing some extra batteries. So I do like this. This thing is so much lighter and easier to take off than, than mine. Okay access. Don't really get, get much access from the sides or the top. So it would be kind of hard to have a diesel in there and work on that. I think it looks pretty tight. Okay, cut. 
so we're gonna take a look at the bilge. Well, actually, maybe you stand over here. Yeah. Let's go check the bilge. So he's got an old fuel tank, looks like aluminum. And a bilge pump in there. It goes deep? Yeah, very deep bilge. It's kind of a long keel. Not quite as full as mine, but um, yeah, it looks good. I think the the weight is bolted up. No, I think it's encapsulated. Like, I'll have to look that up. Should have been this one down like this. Are there more of those, like over there? Yeah, let's go see the other one too. Oh, oh that works. I'm not crazy about the carpet, but it'll work until it gets too nasty. Another one here. Just a little, little village. And then I think it's another one. He said it's like a, a separate one up here. Oh, I guess these are the wires for the mast wiring. So hopefully that's secured to the inside mast. There's, another, there's like a separate little village here you have to kind of empty separately, but it's staying pretty dry. And then I wonder if there was a, is there a shower right here? Look, looks like no shower, but there's a grate, so maybe you could do a shower up here. I think he said he had a door for this, maybe, in his car. So a neat boat. Yes. We'll figure out the motor and maybe take it down to Mexico. I took a laser scan, a LiDAR scan of the boat using Scaniverse iPhone app. It's pretty cool. We do have a reef point, that's good. I'm gonna use my shoe here. Oh, so there are some of those. What do we got here? We got battens. So. So do you touch these things then? Oops. Uh, yeah. What I'm a little, what I want to see is I want to see, it looks like this rope might have shrunk. I see some like, like, this looks like it's kind of bunched up together. And unfortunately, I, there's not an easy way to pull this. This rope is like sewn on there. So I have to figure a way to remove that rope or find a different sail, if that is the case. It really, I mean, you can force sail it, but the sail shot in some shape is just really bad. I should maybe be on your yeah. side. So, yeah, it just, it's just really baggy uh, because the, either the sail stretched out or this, this rope shrunk. I think it's probably a little bit of both, but mainly this rope, these ropes shrink over time. Most of the older boats I have, I've seen this. And sometimes you can just pull the rope out, it's like a sleeve, and you can just slide the rope out of it. But this is like sewn all the way on there. So that'll be something to deal with. So you can see the halyard is all the way tight, but it looks like it's loose just because the bagginess of it. But you know, sail makers like to give YouTubers free sails, so yeah, maybe. that's another option. <laughs> I went and checked out the rockets at the Kennedy Space Center because we're nearby. It's pretty, pretty cool stuff over there. Now I'm testing my cheap uh, <clears throat> battery powered navigation lights. I got red and green and, and white. These are all the ones that didn't work. The quality control is like really bad on these. See that? It's like failing. But on the other hand, it's like 
less than five bucks I think for all, all of these and that's like they're plenty of to last me you know a whole season probably today is a new day I went to the previous owner and he gave me the title so the boat's officially mine now and I've started loading up all my all my stuff on here for my battery I'm using that the EcoFlow that EcoFlow sent me the EcoFlow battery um, and they wanted they said I needed to show it actually charging stuff in the last video I posted in so here it is plugged in a bunch of stuff uh what we got we got lights running off of it uh we're charging uh my vhf radio i got a fan here you can turn on that thing's working it can even run the uh refrigerator turn that fan off that's annoying so yeah refrigerator's on um this also, who sent me this? Ice Co. Thank you. Ice Co. That's a really nice top loading refrigerator. So that'll be nice to have. I need to get some ratchet straps and strap these down so they won't, won't fall off. But this will be great. I got, I put some solar panels out on the, on the boat up there. And those will charge, charge these up. So this is just a real easy system to use. And EcoFlow said, to mention that there's a link in the description with, with some kind of deals on their website if you want to buy one. It is pretty convenient because it's got the solar charge controller, you know, the shore charge, -er, the inverter, the USB ports, and the battery, and the battery monitor, like this thing that tells you all how many watts you're using. You're using 60 watts, and you can do that for a day with this much power you know, it figures it all out for you so it's pretty pretty convenient the other day i also picked up this uh used torquedo motor i used this same motor on my on the, the sweetest fish i sailed to hawaii and i got a motor mount for it too the uh the, the diesel motor had been removed in this boat so i didn't have a motor and this will just be enough to get me out of the the slip uh, to out into the ocean, but if there's currents and stuff, I'm really gonna have to really gonna play that uh, out careful, plan that carefully, because uh, I don't think I'll be able to motor against any wind or currents with this. Uh, we'll see how how it does. I, it's a like a three horsepower motor. I've got I've got two batteries for it. It came with and a solar charger. It takes like all week to charge it on solar, but. Um, it's a lot. It's just, I just don't really don't want to deal with a diesel or gas motor for this for this boat. My kind of goal is to learn to get better at windsurfing and learn how to do the wing foiling and kiteboarding this winter. So I just kind of use this as a base. And I'm on the east coast of Florida now in Titusville, and I'm gonna sail like a little down Fort Pierce and Jupiter and like all those good. I think uh, probably kite surfing. Spot. It's probably good around here. There's a lot more wind on the east coast of Florida than in uh, the Gulf, and I think I'll get more days to practice. And maybe maybe I'll sail to the Keys or the Bahamas. Uh, time will tell. My brother wants to come out and go for a uh, sea out with me, so that might be kind of fun. First project is getting rid of all the junk. Luckily, we're pretty close to the dumpster. That looks. Well, right there, this boat appears to have two names, Mira and Tamale. Either that or someone stole a bunch of stuff from a boat called Tamale. So I just fell in the water at the marina. I dropped, there was a map sitting on top of my bin. I was carrying the garbage and I reached over to pick it up in the water and I just went all the way over. Thanks for watching. I'm pretty stoked about trying out this new boat in the next video. Hopefully I can get the uh, outboard mounted up and we can take it for a sail. I'm thinking maybe the main sail is not in that bad of a shape. I also do have a, a spare sail for my Cape Dory, which maybe I'll try that out on there too. Although I think it's a little bit too tall. Um, but yeah, pretty stoked about it. And I'm not getting rid of my Cape Dory. That one is in Amsterdam right now. And I'm going back to Amsterdam in March. I had to leave because I'm only allowed 90 days at a time in the the Schengen Europe zone kind of place. Maybe next year I might get a work visa so I can stay longer. I'm looking into Estonian 
work visa, or digital nomad visa it was called. So that's a possibility. So hopefully I can stay longer next year. Um, cause I want to, yeah, sail into the Mediterranean, but for the winter I'm in Florida and I just gonna learn how to wing foil and windsurf better and more do some more kiteboarding just cause all that stuff kind of is related to sailing and makes you better at sailing. And I think it'd be pretty fun. So I'll see you guys in the next video.